Yeah. All right. Welcome. How's everybody doing tonight? I love that. Did you see that? It said, boldly proclaim. Boldly. Can we just give a shout and boldly proclaim the name of Jesus? I want to welcome you here to our encounter. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We are going to worship tonight. We're going to break our fast. We're going to spend time as family in communion. It's going to be a great time. What I'd like for you to kind of put in your mind right now is this. As you fasted over the last three days, you probably had a goal, something you were fasting for. What I want you to do is put out of your mind whether you got that or didn't get that. And I want us to concentrate on Jesus tonight. Okay? Let's concentrate on him and he's going to either bring you the answer or begin to put us on the path for the answer. Can we agree with that tonight? Amen. 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 Well, we are going to break the fast in the same exciting way as Pastor Terry led us in January. And so up on the screen is going to be a passage of Scripture and then a series of prayer that we're going to pray. And I want you to read this with me, okay? I'm not going to read it and you're going to repeat it. We're going to read it together out loud. And let's say this with our out loud voices, okay? Not our inside voices, our outdoor voices. Ready? Is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, and to set the oppressed free, and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry, and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter, when you see them naked, to clothe them, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear, and your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and the malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry, and satisfy the need of the oppressed. Then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land, and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins, and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called the repairer of broken walls, restorer of the streets with dwellings. Yeah, amen. amen, amen. Woo! Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to do a series of prayer right now. And again, I want you to concentrate on Jesus. He is the reason that we are here. He is the reason for our fast. Father, Thank you for the blood of Jesus that purchased our salvation. Thank you that we're able to fast in obedience to your word. Thanks to the spotless lamb and his blood shed for us. We don't have to do anything to earn our salvation. We didn't fast to punish ourselves and earn something with you. But we have the privilege of fasting so that we can feast on you. Wow, Lord, we get to simply dine, to come to the communion table and feast. No fee, no prerequisite, other than accepting your free gift of grace. We enjoyed our time with you these three days. Now help us resume eating without losing an ounce of our intimacy with you without losing a shred of our sensitivity and our obedience to your spirit. Father, you know our causes for fasting. May our voices be heard on high, hear from heaven, and revive spiritually. Increase faith, give a breakthrough, rescue businesses, restore marriages, give wisdom and direction, 
loose bonds of wickedness, undo heavy burdens, set the oppressed free, and break every yoke of slavery. Lord, we know that you expected us to fast, but you also expected us to pray and give too. Help us be generous with everything we have, to not only give our tithes, but offerings too. Show us how to meet the needs of others. Start by showing us someone this week whose needs we can help meet. Lord, you promised that when we engaged in the chosen fast, our light would break forth like the dawn, and your glory would be our rear guard. Our dark night of confusion would become like the noonday. I speak blessing and anointing and the authority of your Holy Spirit over every home represented in this fast. Isaiah 58, 12 promises that when we enter your chosen fast, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins, will raise up the age-old foundations where families and relationships are in ruin and desolation. Restore, Lord. Father, you promise to satisfy our needs in drought and strengthen us. Even now, you will make us like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Some of us are worn out physically, drained dry spiritually compared to previous years. And some of us are in a drought financially. Make us like a well-watered garden, Lord, like a spring whose waters never fail. Thank you in advance for hearing our prayers and answering. But Father, as much as we want needs met and prayers answered, we want you. Fill us, satisfy with presence. Holy Spirit, breathe fresh upon the word each day. Give us an undying passion for Jesus. Baptize us in the fire of your holiness. Break our hearts over what breaks yours. May the things that delight you delight us, for then we will have the desires of our heart. Holy Spirit, breathe on us afresh like a mighty wind. Light the fire again. Come magnify the sun in us. Today, tomorrow, next week, all year. Show us the Savior to the world through our lives. We want to take your truth in your power to a lost and dying world. Wow. Let's just meditate on those words for a moment. Think about everything that we just said. I think the thing that hit me was to not stop that closeness with him. That was the one for me. It was, okay, Lord, now that the fast is over, don't let me forget to spend time with you. Don't let me check that box off. But let me continue in that attitude. And did you notice in there it said, when we do those things, that's when he'll hear from heaven. That's when he'll grant us the desires of our heart. So I want to encourage you tonight. I want to say, encourage you that as you fasted and as you prayed, God heard you. If you didn't receive the exact answer you wanted, your heavenly Father heard you. He loves you. We're going to break the fast now with communion. You may be seated. You can get your elements ready. If you're online with us, you can go ahead and grab something. Grab your cracker. Grab your juice. Whatever is best for you at home. And just be ready to receive the Lord's table tonight. So we do this as family. Maybe one day we'll have a big table that we could all sit around together and just look into each other's eyes and enjoy the time that we had together. I don't know about you, but life groups have been really special this semester. It, it, it just seems, um, I meet on Wednesdays with a group of guys and we've been meeting off and on for four, five, six years, some semblance of this group of guys. And the camaraderie and the accountability and the encouragement that comes. And we just sit around the table. 
And that's what communion is tonight. We're just going to sit around the table. We're going to encourage one another. I want you to look to the person to your left and to your right. This is who you want to encourage. This is your little circle of friends and family right here tonight. So we're going to take a moment right now as we prepare our hearts for communion. I would like us just to take a moment and just say a prayer. You don't even have to know what the need is of the person left and right to you, but just take a moment and thank God that you have somebody sitting there and ask God just to meet their needs. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you for family that you have brought together tonight. Thank you for the person to our left and to our right. Father, tonight, instead of asking for blessings for ourselves, instead of asking for that specific answer for ourselves, would you meet that need of the person to our left? Would you meet that need to the person to our right? Would you open the windows of heaven and pour the desires of their heart out on them, Father? Lord, we humble ourselves before you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. John 17 is a beautiful picture of how much Jesus loves us. We, um, we know that Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and, and most of us know that, he, you know, the, the couple lines that he prayed, Father, if there be any way, take this cup from me. John records a whole prayer that Jesus prayed the night before, just before he was betrayed. And it had nothing to do with himself. He prayed for you and he prayed for me. I just want to read a couple, couple verses from that. And I'd like for you, maybe um, tonight or tomorrow, sometime before the week ends up, to go home and read Jesus' prayer over you in John 17. So after saying these things, he was responding to the disciples who were asking questions. Jesus looked up to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. Man. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. Think about that. The son gives eternal life to each one God had given him. That means you and you and you and you and you at home. If you're a believer, if you have submitted your life to Jesus, he has given you that eternal life. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. Now I want to jump down. There's a lot of great stuff, but I want to jump down to verse 20. I'm praying not only for the, these disciples. He knew the pain and the torture that he was getting ready to go through. That he was worried about. He was worried about his boys. He was worried about how they were going to respond emotionally. He was worried about their lives. Their lives would be in danger also. Not only, their lives would literally be in danger from that moment on until they lost their lives, most of them martyred. I'm praying not only for these disciples, but he looked into the future. He looked into 2022. He looked into April. He looked into this encounter night. And he said, I'm praying for all who will ever believe in me through their message. As the disciples spread that message and it went down from generation to generation to generation until it hit wherever you accepted Jesus. He was praying for you that night. I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. So tonight we're all one. We're all one family because we believe. So as we take the bread tonight, we break it. This is for your healing. The prophet Isaiah prophesied that his body would be broken, that he would have stripes on his back for your healing. So for your healing, for the healing of the one next to you to your right, the healing of the one next to you to your left. Let's take the bread together.
As we take the cup, his blood was shed for the remission of our sins. I had this great opportunity. I just want to share this with you. I had this fantastic opportunity yesterday. I had a young lady come into my office. She's very, very new to the church. And she's suffered a great loss over the past six months. She came in for the whys. Why would this have happened? I don't have answers for that. The answers that I have are very theological. They're true. They're very theological. They don't bring comfort. But as we began to explore her faith journey, she began with resistance. Still kind of mad at him. Okay, that's okay. And as we began to talk and we began to read some scripture, I mean, back to the basics, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his son. I told her that was for you. We got back around to, I want to accept him, but I'm still mad. I said, it's okay. You can still be mad at him and still, still accept his forgiveness for you. And I told her, I said, I'm not saying that if we say this prayer together that your pain is going to go away in this moment. It might. But probably it's just going to begin you on the journey for his Holy Spirit to begin to bring you the freedom and healing. Right there in my office, this young lady turned her life over to God and submitted her life to God. And I thought, Lord, what... What a great opportunity. And this was, I mean, it was kind of a set, set appointment, but kind of not. I knew she was coming in sometime. And actually, when they came to get me, to be really honest, my first thought was, oh, I was right in the middle of something, you know? And the Holy Spirit said, bam, yeah, you're right in the middle of getting ready to minister to somebody. It's why I have you here. I just wanted to share that with you because that's what this is all about, right? It's all about Christ shed blood and bringing someone to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so again, as we take this cup, maybe right now you can think about an unsafe friend, family member, loved one. And Lord, we say thank you as we take the cup for our salvation. And we say in anticipation of the thank you we will bring to you when our loved one accepts you also. In Jesus' name. It's time to worship. Get ready. <laughs> Let's stand to our feet. It's a celebration night. Let's celebrate. Oh, 
from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. shall believe in him. Amen. God, we have come here tonight to praise you. We have come to focus on you and you alone because you are worthy of our praise. Let's all sing this out together. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. So let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him high With all creation cry God we praise you the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. Let it rise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We pray. Come on, you sing it. what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall you cannot survive when we praise you. The God of 
This mountain can be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. The tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. Oh, we believe for it. We Hope is never lost. Oh, for there is still an empty grave. God, we believe no matter what, there is power in your name. So much power. God, we believe, 
that you are the God of who we sing about. We believe, Lord. But some of us need to say the rest of that, but help my unbelief. We believe. But help our unbelief, God. You can take a seat for just a moment. You know, I really believe that when we get together for these, these nights, these um, encounter nights, when we come off of a fast, I think it's really important that we um, would hear some testimonies. You know, it's, 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 it's something that when we hear of what God is doing or has done in somebody else's life, what does that do to you? I know for me, it just encourages me so much. And I might be in a place, I might be stuck somewhere and hearing the goodness of God, of what he's done for somebody else can really encourage me and can stir up my faith, and then I can go on and keep, keep going on, get, lift my head up high and keep going on, right? Well, tonight, I want you to hear from a very special woman who is a, a partner here at the Father's House. Her name is Celeste, and she is coming to the stage. So let's, let's give her a nice, warm welcome as she comes to the stage. Come on, keep giving it up for her. Good evening. Well, I'm just going to get right into it. Okay. Dave and I moved here about seven years ago, and when looking for a church, we passed TFH. I felt like the Holy Spirit drew me. He's done that before. So after our first visit, I knew that this was my church. However, after attending a few services, my husband informed me he was going back to the church of his youth a church that I grew up in also, but now since I was divorced, I was marked unworthy to participate in all the sacraments, even though I was abandoned and uh, left with two children under three. He knew that I would never, Dave knew I would never attend that church again. And this produced an even more major divide in our marriage, which was already dysfunctional. I felt betrayed and lost all my trust in him. Only because when Dave and I originally talked about marriage, I told him that it was paramount that he be a Christian, that God was the center of our marriage, and we needed to be evenly yoked. We had some differences, but nothing very alarming. But we needed to be together in our faith since we were blending a very complicated family. We had two 12-year-old intellectually gifted girls that were three weeks apart, two nine-year-old girls that were three months apart, with one being moderately high, hyperactive, and the other a high-functioning autistic. Oh, yeah, one thing. We also had an untrained dog. <laughs> Nothing worked out as we planned or discussed. Our marriage over the last 26 years had been a, has been a roller coaster with a plethora of raging emotions. Anger, crying, begging, arguments, frustration, resentment, vengeance, confusion, even hatred. I'm an emotional being and I approach life and my faith with my heart. I believe my relationship, Christ with, my relationship with Christ is first and foremost in my life. I have a blind faith 
Whatever the word says, I believe is the truth, period. I functioned as a jack of all trades in our marriage. I felt I had to explain, show, teach, direct, perform in all areas, do whatever I needed to do. Oh, and I also had a full-time medical sales job. So I was constantly moving and changing hats. Dave, on the other hand, was an intellect. His life and faith revolved around gathering knowledge and information. He made sure you knew what he knew because what he knew and thought was the absolute truth. And it didn't matter what you thought or what you knew. In public, Dave was friendly, gregarious, talkative, even to me. But when we got home and the door shut, he disengaged, disconnected. He would retreat into his world of reading news, sports, listening to music, and he could do all those things at the same time and know exactly what was happening in them all. It was a major ordeal to interact with him or to get him involved or simply, he simply ignored everything that was going on around him. The distance between his head and his heart was a major obstacle in our marriage. We lived parallel lives. We had no relationship, minimal communication, and no unity. When I, if I would be asked about my marriage during that time, I described it as, I live in the shopping mall where you pass by people and have no interaction. You just go about your own business, no acknowledgement of anyone's existence. You don't even have to say hello. Just move on with your life. In essence, I was a solo partner in this marriage. Dave was a Christian, a good man, a good provider, but he was emotionally, physically, and spiritually unavailable. I, I tried to reach Dave in every way I could think of. It was emotionally draining and constantly frustrating, and I was always unsuccessful. I tried five different counselors. I did whatever they said, read whatever they gave me, talked and engaged the way they suggested. No matter what, nothing ever changed. I was always praying, begging, and asking God to intervene. I knew he was there, but it seemed like my prayers weren't being answered. At church this past October on Sunday, I was at the lowest point in my life. I, I had no hope left. I had tried for 26 years, and I, I couldn't hold on any longer. I was spiritually drained, emotionally spent, and physically still experiencing the same health issues I had over the last 26 years related to stress. Things had taken a huge toll on me. I had just made a major decision. I had signed a lease and finalized making arrangements that would change my life in a few weeks. I was going to break my covenant with God and Dave, the covenant I vowed to keep until death. I was broken. I was desperate. I was barely hanging on. Because when I became a Christian, I always prayed for the faith that our forefather Abraham had. He believed in the God that could bring the dead back to life and who brought into existence what didn't exist before. But I couldn't reach that level of faith. And I couldn't do it anymore. I was a failure, and I was so ashamed. Pastor Andrea spoke, spoke that morning on 2 Chronicles 20 where the Israelites were up against insurmountable odds. They were facing battle with three different nations. Jehoshaphat cried out to God and he proclaimed that the peace, people fast, pray, praise, and seek God. I felt like Pastor Andrea was talking to me specifically, and there was no one else in this church. And at the same time, I felt the nudge of the Holy Spirit. And God said to me, draw closer to me. I want more of your heart. He got my attention. I didn't know how or even if I had the energy, but I was going to be obedient. I spoke to Pastor Andrea 
because, and told her because I wanted to be accountable to someone and I was excited about the possibilities. When Monday came, I was out to experience God in a way I've never felt him before. My mission, fast, pray, praise, and draw near to God. I started at five in the morning by playing Pray First music. I sang, I worshiped, I danced, I praised, I lifted my hands, I twirled around in a circle and I cried out, I want more of God in my life. I prayed the Our Father, I put on my spiritual armor, I prayed the names of Jehovah, I prayed God's attributes from A to Z by looking up all of the scripture and reciting them out loud. I prayed who I am in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Scripture after scripture, declaring and decreeing those scriptures with purpose and intentionality. I was a prayer warrior. I prayed like I was in a battle against insurmountable odds. I personalized Psalm 91 and I acted it out. I believed what I said. I covered myself with feathers. I put myself under his wings. I carried my shield of faith and I trampled the great serpent and the lion. I prayed standing, walking on my knees, humbled myself face down. I prayed when I was driving, shopping, playing water volleyball in the shower. I took a stand. I wasn't always this intense when I prayed. I envisioned myself at times walking down a dirt road with the Lord or sitting on the porch swing and talking with him or just would lie in bed with my eyes closed, feeling his presence and listening for his voice. No matter what, I was always expecting something awesome to happen. I'm sure if anyone would have seen me at this time, they would have thought I was crazy. I didn't care. I believed in God's faithfulness. I didn't know how, when, or why, but God said he wanted more of me and I wanted more of him. One interesting point here is that I didn't really pray for my situation. I didn't really even consider it. My goal was to get closer to God. I fasted and all I know is, is that I ate very little. I never really thought about food. I craved to be overstuffed with God. Three days went by and I didn't want to stop. So I went the whole week and focused on fasting, prayer, praising, and drawing near to God. Sunday was approaching and I couldn't wait to talk to Pastor Andrea. I had realized I now had a deeper faith. I trusted God. And in my trusting, I found him as my hope in a whole new way. I drew near to him and he drew near to me. I felt like a new person, strong, on fire, ready to tackle any challenge. The funny thing was, I was also noticing that my husband was acting differently. He seemed to be walking and around me more and at times he was talking, yeah. I can't believe it. He was talking. He said things like he wanted to spend more time together. He wanted to start going to church, read the Bible, and pray together. Wow, was God changing him? It seemed to me like God cracked open the door to his heart. Honestly, I have to tell you, it was incredible. I was amazed, but I was more excited about where God had taken me spiritually in my relationship with him rather than the changes in my husband and in my marriage. That, <laughs> because all those turned out to be secondary, I knew at that point God had changed me. The stress, frustration, disappointment, all the burden and the pain I carried, it all disappeared. I had stopped striving and just let God take over my life. I felt like I was finally balanced. God was first and foremost in my life. Since that week, I continue to fast, pray, and praise at the beginning of every month. I don't want to lose that connection with God or take it for granted. 
I fast, pray, and praise because there's always something in my life that God points out that needs my attention, and it can only be addressed by drawing closer to him. Oh, yes, in my marriage, I think you'd want to know about that. Well, my husband comes to church now with me every Sunday. He just finished growth track. <laughs> we pray first thing every morning together by doing you version with the Father's House and other Bible studies. We play praise music constantly in the house. We went to celebrate recovery here at the Father's House, and it's a program centered around hurts, habits, and hang-ups, not just addictions, okay? We all have some type of dysfunction in our lives. You should check it out. It really helps. We volunteer at Come As You Are Ministry, and we go to Life Group. We are in the process of building a whole new relationship by communicating and interacting with Christ as the center of our marriage. We're experiencing unity in our marriage for the very first time. Oh, and... We still live in the shopping mall, but now we're talking, walking, and shopping together. <laughs> and God knows how much I like to shop. <laughs> Everything is not perfect. It's a process. But with God, anything is possible. And our commitment is to keep growing in, with, and through him. I'm thankful for the pastors here at TFH, they live their faith, and they desire to lead this church by their obedience to God's word. Thank you, pastors. I am so grateful that when God called me, I said, yes, Lord, your will for my life. And right now, I know there's people sitting out in those chairs, and God's nudging you just like he did me, fasting, prayer, and praise. That's the formula for victory, especially when you're facing insurmountable odds and circumstances. Remember, it's what we do that gets us the victory. Fast, prayer, and praise. We read about it all the time in the Bible over and over, and it can still be done today. It's a choice and an action that you have to take. If God can answer my prayer, he can answer yours. I pray that you answer his call. I pray you'll say, yes, Lord, your will for my life, and move to action by fasting, prayer, and praise. Thank you. Thank you.
praise in this place. Do you believe that? That he can do that? Do you have something that you need broken in your life? God said it. He'll do it. If you need something broken in your life or the life of a loved one, would you raise your hand right now? Would you come down here? He said it. It's done. We have to have the faith to walk that out. I'm going to imagine in that the second day, Celeste, it would have been real easy for you just to say, well, I didn't see the miracle happen. And so, well, I, I, I tried. I gave it one day. I didn't see the miracle, so maybe God didn't really say that to me. But did you hear what she said? <laughs> she said she had, during all this time, it was just about her getting close to God. And I think that's what he's calling us to tonight. I think he's calling us back to a place of closeness with him. He knows your needs. He's calling us back to a place of surrender to him. He's calling us back to a place where, where nothing else matters. Whether I, I, I get the breakthrough, I don't get the breakthrough. He's calling us back to a place of, will you just trust in me? No matter what, will you trust in me? It's a really old song that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of heaven, the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That's what he's calling us to do is just to look to him tonight. So what I want you to do right now, I want you to take about five seconds in your mind and just tell God what that need is. He already knows, but he likes us to hear. But now we are going to pray that no matter what the answer is, when the answer comes, does not come, that we will turn our eyes to Jesus, that we will seek to grow closer to Him, that we will surrender all of us to Him. If you feel comfortable, maybe just put a hand on somebody's shoulder, take a hand, however that would be. Remember, this is family. We're doing this together tonight. If you're out there in the audience, uh, would you just lift your hands up towards everybody that's up here? Lord God, I just ask you tonight, Father. Lord, I ask right now that I would draw closer to you. <laughs> Father, I ask that I would lay down those things in my life that I'm concentrating on answers and just say, Father, I want more of you in my life. May Celeste's testimony ever encourage me. May it ever challenge me, Lord, to, to, to just draw closer to you. Father, tonight we gather and we say together, we say corporately, Father, that we will lay down that burden at your feet and we will just draw closer to you. We commit to just spend time with you. We commit to hear your voice in our heart. We commit to hear what you would say to us through your word, through music, through just your impressions on our hearts, Lord. We commit to that. Father, the answers will come when you release those to us. Lord, I pray against anxiousness that would go away, Lord, that we would not be anxious over the answer. I pray for physical healing tonight, emotional healing, relationships repaired and restored tonight, marriages that draw closer to one another. 
I pray for relationships that have been estranged for years between, between families, especially between parents and children, would be drawn back together. But Father, through it all, through it all, we will draw closer to you. Now, Father, we commit this in our hearts and our attitudes and our actions, and we put one foot forward, and we say we commit to this in Jesus' name. And if you believe that, say amen with me tonight. Amen. amen. You said, I believe. You said it. It is done. You said, I believe. You said, It is done. You said, I believe. You said, night with this song and you you might know it you might not and that's okay and if you want to you can sit down you know, I made a joke earlier if if you're come from a Catholic background you should feel pretty comfortable here tonight stand up sit down stand up sit down right <laughs> but this next song that we're gonna do you know it's one thing that we can come into this place and we've got this amazing group of people up here that leads us in worship every time that we gather the energy in here is amazing you know you've got people on your left your right and front and in back that are just sometimes are just worshiping their face off you know and there's strength in the room right but what happens when you go home you know the biggest um, thing that I got out of what you said Celeste is that more than the thing that you wanted, you wanted the one who gave you the thing. So maybe tonight that you've been in this place where maybe you just feel like you've been stuck. You've been discouraged, you've been downtrodden, and you just feel like you can't climb out of a pit. Can I tell you that I talked to somebody this week who they've been going through some stuff and are still going through some stuff. And they've gotten to the place where they said, I've already done that. I've already worshiped. I've already fasted. And you know what I said to them? I didn't say, oh, I'm so sorry you feel that way. No, I said, well, do it again. Do it again. Yeah. And do it again and again and again and again yeah. until you see victory. Yeah. Because you were made for victory and you should not take anything less than victory. Right. You need people like that in your life. But what do you do when you don't? Because David, in the Psalms, all throughout the Psalms, it sounds like he's schizophrenic, man. I mean, do you read some of the Psalms and you're like, he's here, he's there, he's there. Well, like, what is, what is happening right now? Like, does he have a, multi, a multiple personality disorder? Like, what is happening? But no, he was real and he was raw with his God. He said, I got all these people coming after me. Where are you at? I've got all these people coming after me and they're taunting me saying, where's your God at now? Maybe you've been hearing that lately. God's not going to do that for you. You didn't read your Bible for 20 minutes yesterday, so he's not going to show up for you. That's not who our God is. So when you get in that place, we wanted to give you a song that you could sing out over yourself. Because if you don't have someone to encourage you, you've got to encourage yourself. Actually, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to encourage ourselves in the Lord. 
But how do you do that? How do you do that? We take our eyes off of the situation and we place them on him. Because he's the only one that can get us through the situation. Right? Amen. So this song, Hannah's going to sing this song over you and over the room tonight and all the way into your living room tonight. And we're going to get to this part in the song where we're going to start talking to ourselves. And you're going to catch on really quick. And I challenge you tonight, don't stand there with your arms folded. Stand even in the midst of your circumstance, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your chaos, in the midst of your confusion, and talk to yourself and remind yourself of who is on the inside of you. Oh, my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often. Every song must end, and you never do. So I'll throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy 
we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, Jesus, the name above every other name. Yes, it is. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Sing it out. Sing holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show.
nobody like you there's nobody beside you nobody in all the earth we commit tonight to do exactly what we just sang that we will build our life upon you father may this night mark each and every one of us that would be the night that faith was stirred that will be the night that trust was stirred, that will be the night that obedience was stirred, that will be the night that victory was stirred, that will be the night that hunger was stirred, that will be the night that thirst was stirred, that we would walk out of this place different than we walked in, and God, this week when we find ourselves where we get stuck back in a place of discouragement, we will remember this night because you've marked us. And we will know what to do. We will turn our eyes on you. And we will worship you with everything that we have. Even if it's only a simple word like hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we surrender our whole hearts to you, God. We love you, Father. We are so thankful. We're so grateful for all that you are. God, forgive us right now for seeking the thing more than the one who gives it. May we have an encounter like Celeste did. A true encounter with you, God, that we would just get to a place where we hungered so much for you that everything else just went away. And when we align ourselves with you, God, you take care of the rest. So, Father, help us to do that. Holy Spirit, speak to us in places that you want to work on. We know that there's no condemnation and guilt in you, so we know that you're coming to us as a loving Father because you want so much more for each and every one of us. So, Father, our desire is that we want to grow. Give us the strength to do that. We know that you'll give us the grace. That we can be filled up with you, God, that we can take you out to a world who is dying. As we are coming into this Easter season, right now, Father, I just want to take a moment and I want to pray over Easter. There are some of us in this room and that are watching online that we have asked people. We've invited them. Yeah. Father, I pray that 2022 Easter will be the Easter. That that invite will have a yes back behind it. That people would flock to this place because your spirit is in this place. Yeah. Father, we thank you that lives will be changed just as they are every time that we meet because your spirit's here. Because truth is spoken. And because we put you at the forefront of everything that we do, Jesus. So I'm believing. I'm believing for a multitude of people to come to know Jesus this Easter season. Yes. Father, I pray that they don't even have to get here on Easter for them to believe that they're gonna come. But I'm believing that it would even happen all the way up to, that you would give us opportunities, they're all around us, God, to share the gospel, to share the good news, to just tell of, of just like Celeste did tonight, of how good you are. Help us to be bold. We're not here for ourselves, we're here for you, Jesus. 
And we're here to carry out your kingdom's agenda. And that is to make it bigger. We love you, Father. We worship you. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.